Hi, good morning. I'm Hajime from IIJ. And today I'm going to talk about my recent personal experience playing with the user space network stack with a relatively new uh, TCP condition control algorithm on VVR. I'm very happy to back to this conference as a speaker because I was not involved in any kind of to technical talk in the last um, conference. So this talk is all about that my current project, which is about the Linux, which is called Linux kernel library. Uh, this is kind of the framework that the, you can use the Linux kernel code on top of the various platform. The various platform includes the, the user space network applications. You can do any kind of user space, and you can use the, uh, any kind of Linux kernel code directly inside the user space application. Like uh, you can do views, news, views to utilize the file system network and the block devices. And the, the other example of this uh, Linux kernel library is to be host as uh, the core part of the Unikernel. Unikernel is the kind of the single application framework that can be run, run on top of the hypervisor directory without involving the, any underlying layer. And as a, another example, uh, you can do a network simulation, which, is, which I have been talking about this feature in the past NetDev conference. So if you are interested in you can take a look at the video on the slides. And the, most of the benefit to do such a things with this library is you can reuse the mature uh, Linux kernel code in a different environment. So if you, can, if you want to do some, you, you want to have a, user space net network stack, for example, you can do, you can implement your own, users, uh, own network stack from scratch, or you can port some existing code into your application. But in, with this framework, we don't have to do such a, uh, the implementation of uh, porting for, to utilize on the body, uh, different, uh, different environment. So the use cases is, is uh, we have uh, three different use cases for this, and uh, one of them is the operating system personality to introduce new feature without involving the host, operat host operating system. Or with the unikernel use cases, you can, do, you can create a very really tiny guest operating system, you, which you can instantiate so many numbers of the guest operating system in a single physical node. Or, or the net with the network simulation, you can test or debug uh, your uh, Linux kernel code with the kind of the framework to continuously integrate your test. So the motivation behind this work, at least for me, is uh, to, tackle, to tackle the existing user space network stack. So there are so many numbers of the user space network stack. The, the this, this list is a very short part of the uh, user, stack net, user space network implementation. And all of them has, uh, have a very beautiful number to improve the performance of the network stack. But at the same time, they degrade many, many, kind, many aspects of the network stack and some of them lose the, uh, lose the existing application support because they don't have the project API. Or some of them only implement the partial part of the network stack. Like uh, they merely support IPv6, for example. So I don't want to do such a stuff. I do really want to reuse the mature network stack, even though we are using the different environment like our user space network stack. And because the, the implementation is uh, maybe we need to give up the, the mature matured implementation, which is uh, the output of the couple of decades effort. And the, you can also port, but the porting is also in, introduced another problem. You, are, you rarely spend much of time to track the newest version of the, the original code. And the reusing is also makes another benefit. 
in, uh, to preserve the various semantics of the, uh, the original uh, version of the source, uh, original version of the Linux kernel, you can preserve the syntax level compatibility with the different, uh, different operating system. And you can preserve the API or system call level uh, compatibility. And those compatibility benefit to utilize the, your existing tools or your existing application with a different environment. I don't have much uh, strong opinion for the speed up with, the user, uh, with this framework. Uh, like the, any kind of virtualization technology like uh, hypervisor, uh, hypervisor or parabitalization technology, we can, our goal for the performance, our, our performance goal is to achieve the same speed of the original version, original kernel. So how it looks like, how the LKL looks like, uh, Linux kernel library is implemented as a hardware independent architecture, which is called arc slash LKL. And uh, so the motivation behind this, uh, uh, this diagram is in, we are trying to not modify this Linux kernel part as well as the application code. So we can use the kernel implementation as well as the application with this framework. So in order to, ach uh, to achieve this uh, benefit, we put the three different um, intermediate layer between the application and the Linux kernel and the hardware independent architecture, as well as the, the host, host environment in order to abstract the underlying uh, execution environment. So with the, with the current version of the LKL, we supported the various uh, operating system with the user space applications uh, in execution. And uh, we can also run this library application with the library on top of the, on top of the hypervisor directory. Right now, we only have a uh, KVM with a very specific uh, environment, uh, uh, with specific platform support. But uh, we are going to, we may be able to easily support the Zen hypervisor, for example. And recently, we also added the, the UEFI bootloader support, which means that you can access the file system before Booting the, uh, before booting the uh, operating system. So in the your UEFI control, uh, uh, prompt, you can access the file in order to check how the boot process is going on. And to support the existing application, we also put it the standard library for this particular architecture, uh, which is based on the mass, mass root libc implementation. And we also introduced the cross compilation build through chain based on the Lampran Unicorn contributions. So I'm going to show a couple of demos for these uh, use cases. So the first uh, demo shows the uh, user space network stack with the uh, defined from the uh, host of operating system one. So in this uh, host, uh, we are using the 4.9 version of the kernel, but with this uh, special configuration env environment variables, uh, which is configuring the gateway address and the IP address of the, this particular application. In this case, we are using NetPath. This is just a special version of the NetPath, uh, which is just uh, ELF binary. And uh, if you execute this command, you, see, you should see this is just connecting to the net server running inside the net, uh, this local host. And it's this particular application is using different kernel version, which is embedded, it in the, embedded it into this uh, net power application. And another demo is, uh, is 
and kind of the unikernel frame, uh, using the unikernel framework, which means the NetPath application embedded, it, the, embedded the LKL in a kernel library, and the, this binary is running on top of the QM KVM hypervisor. So you can create your own, I don't know, uh, own, own operating system for the guest operating system, but you can only use the single application in this case. Um, there is a uh, trouble, but I need, I think I, I can debug later. Okay. So going back to the original motivation of my current work, so I want to have a user space network stack, but uh, I don't want to have a new network stack. But uh, by doing such uh, approaches with the um, hardware independent architecture, there was a concern and uh, there was a discussion about the timing accuracy issues of the user space network, uh, user space code execution. This was discussed, this was discussed in the last NetDev conference. And uh, one of the examples of this kind of situation of the issue is the, uh, if the protocol implementation of the kernel code is used in the highly, high resolution timer, which requires the really accuracy of the timing behavior, uh, it would be make some trouble. Uh, and uh, for example, BBR, the condition control algorithm, algorithm using, uh, uses the packet scheduling feature, which is based on the FQ packet scheduler. And this scheduler requires a, a HL timer, high, re high resolution timer, which uh, may have t some trouble with the user space ex execution or user space emulation. So I want to have try, I want to try to investigate these issues by using LKL. And the, here is the report. Uh, of my experience. So as the previous speaker already explained about what is VBR, I will, I'm going to skip most of the part of the, this ex explanation. So basically, they are great. I mean, they outperform the, the, the other condition control algorithm in the real environment. And uh, most of the, uh, most of the outstanding uh, impressive result is the, in some situation, in some condition, the achieved good put is more than 25 times faster than the cubic uh, uh, condition control algorithm. So the first trial of uh, using this BBR on top of the user space network stack is just trying to achieve the uh, just trying to reproduce the results that the original BBR paper it describes. And uh, this topology is the first uh, experiment, experiment topology, which only consists of the two simple nodes connecting, connecting the back-to-back -back link with the 10 gig BPS and Ethernet. And uh, we try to so for the right side node, we use the standard Linux kernel and the net server in order to receive the TCP flows. And the left side show, uh, has the two different configuration. One of them is using this standard Linux kernel and the standard net path uh, with, the diff with the two different congestion control algorithm. And uh, another configuration is using the LKL and then uh, try to use try to utilize the bandwidth between the two nodes. And in this uh, benchmark, or in this experiment, there is no um, packet loss or bottleneck configuration in this back-to-back uh, -back link. And the uh, round trip time between these two nodes is very, uh, very short. So here is the result of the first trial. So be, uh, with the standard Linux, uh, config, standard Linux net path, it shows almost uh, fully utilizing the bandwidth available 
between two links, even though you are using the defined condition control algorithm. And with Cubic and uh, LKL user space network stack, uh, it shows almost similar, but with BBR, uh, we didn't get it. I mean, the, f the first thing that I have to investigate is why this uh, lower bandwidth achieved by the user space network stack. So only BBR with user space network stack shows the bad performance. And uh, one thing that I investigating during the, this benchmark is the timestamp uh, using the every ACK packet received is using the very rough, uh, roughly assigned uh, timing, time value, which is provided by LKL, I mean, uh, LKL system call. And if, you, if we can provide more higher resolution of the timestamp, it should be improved the BBR performance even though you are using uh, user space network stack. So the first trial for me is trying to change the tick, uh, count, tick interval value. So before, uh, as a default configuration, LKL uses the 100 as a tick, tick, uh, tick counters. While the standard Linux, I mean, in this, uh, in this experiment, we use, we use the Fedora version, uh, which used the uh, 1,000 hertz for the tick interval. And if, you, if we increase this tick interval value to 1,000 on, on top of the user space, uh, it shows the increased uh, good put as I as I est uh, assumed, but it still shows the relative, relatively lower performance with this uh, tick interval configuration changes. So what is happening when you want to timestamp on the every packet received? So the basic behavior of the previous part of the LKL is using ZIFIs for the every packet timestamp. So it means it's only, it can only have a resolution of the tick interval, which means the minimum um, RTT measurement, RTT measurement value should be uh, capped to the, this ZIFIs resolution. But uh, if some uh, specific architecture of the Linux kernel source tree uh, define the override function, which is showing this scale clock function inside this uh, architecture, uh, you can provide any resolution for the uh, clock, variable, clock variable instead of using the phase values. So with this uh, scale clock, uh, internally LKL uses the clock get time VC score in order to pro provide this uh, nanosecond resolution value. Uh, it improves the uh, result with this uh, situation. This is the first trial of this improvement. But what happens if there's some CPU architecture doesn't provide this uh, higher resolution timestamp by not using this scale cross function. So, it, as, as I showed in the previous example, it shows the good uh, bad performance with the time RTT measurement. And I reported these issues is the BBR development mailing list and the uh, luckily, we have uh, patches from the new from Google to tolerate this lower performance, even though we are we cannot use the high resolution timestamp. I didn't go into the detail about these patches, but you uh, you can look at the full discussion about uh, this uh, improvement by link, uh, looking at this uh, mailing list archive. So that's the first. Uh, so with this patch and the result, the higher 
high resolution timestamp, uh, without high resolution timestamps, you can achieve almost similar good boot as the standard Linux has, like this. Okay, so the next step will be to reproduce another situation of the BB, uh, of BBR works well uh, by putting the middle box between the two nodes uh, and introducing some packet modification in the middle. So in this case, we introduce the packet 1% one pass, one packet loss and the 100 millisecond delay in the middle. And then we measure, uh, so we measured uh, this, uh, this uh, good put on top of, uh, by using the same software as, as I showed before. And then, uh, as you can see, the standard Linux all, uh, still shows the good performance, even though in this situation. And the cubic shows the slightly uh, not mm, less uh, less boundaries because of the there is a packet loss between the nodes. But this, with the LKL, there is no good performance. So why is that? So after investigating a lot of information inside what what's happening inside the LKL, we found that the socket buffer is already full. I mean. We didn't have any configuration to change the socket buffer size with the LKL because we are only we are we can only run a single process and we cannot have a, a multiple processes outside from the main uh, processes. So we we provided a configuration interface to change the configuration uh, sys control variables and also we use the static. Um, static or not, virtual memory size for the kernel instances because we didn't have any ha direct interface for the hardware. So the default memory size of the LKL was uh, 64 megabyte, which, uh, which limits the expansion of the send buffer size by uh, calling this fun uh, TCP should expand send buffer function. And the other configuration we added is to just enable the high resolution timers in, on the kernel configuration, as well as the uh, FQ packet scheduler instead of, a, instead of invoking TC command, because we, cannot, we also cannot use the TC command. So here is some sort, some sort, of, the, sort of the observation of the the delivery delay of the timer events, each timer event. And the green, bar, green line shows the Linux, standard Linux uh, delivery delay, while the purple line shows the LK, LKS one. So, and it means the, how to interpret, interpret this graph is the left side is better. And left side is the more shorter delivery delay has on the each packet scheduling functions. And as you can see, with the Linux, standard Linux kernel, the delivery, delivery delay of the high resolution timer is about uh, 100 nan nanoseconds, while the, with the LKL, it's almost about 20 or 30 microseconds for the delivery delay. So, I want to improve this situation because the LKLA uses their own scheduler to schedule the court. And uh, one trial and the data hack to reduce this scheduling delay is trying to less the, the, uh, the cost of the system call. In the, in the scheduler code of the uh, LKA, we use the, a system call in order to block some uh, program of the schedule. But uh, if the, the block duration is short. We are trying to avoid the system call. And by, instead of that, we provided the, and we provided the fast pass to busy port the clock variable in order to block the call. So by 
doing, uh, changing this uh, scheduling behavior, the, the pipeline is moving to the left side, but, uh, which is good for the packet scheduling. But it, uh, uh, it also introduced some tail latency, which I'm still investigating on this behavior. So this is the final result. So with the socket buffer, large socket buffer, yellow standard, a uh, yellow bar, which means the standard Linux kernel with the BBR shows the almost 8 gigabit per second for the good put, while the purple bar shows it's almost 4 gig BPS with this situation, which was improved somehow from the original performance, like uh, we only have uh, 100 mega BPS in the before modifying, in, before adding such a feature. So here is a summary of what ha we have done for to improve the situation of the user space network stack. And it also includes the previous effort of the JD2 from Google, which introduced uh, some offloading function. And the next possible steps for LKL should be more profiling and more finding some bottleneck in, in the user space execution. And we can also try the various shortcuts for the packet or clock accessing, like a BG polling IO, as some of the DPDK library does. And we can also try to investigate how the unicorn configuration works well in terms, of, in terms of the packet delivery ratio, because there is no scheduler issue that user space execution has. So that's almost it. I'm running, a time, running out of time, so that's it. Thank you so much. Uh, one question only. I really appreciate this kind of investigation because I was always theoretically thinking that accuracy, accurate timers in user space would be a issue for uh, algorithms such as BBR. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the, next, the next level of this problem is if LKL is uh, executing on a machine that's loaded, that has a high load and has other things running on it, uh, consuming CPU time, uh, LKL is getting preempted quite frequently. Mm -hmm. And if it's getting preempted quite frequently, you could get preempted between the calculation of the timestamp and the actual application of that timestamp value and measurements and things of this nature, so you get right back to the timing accuracy mm -hmm. problem again. So that's something to, to consider. Yeah, I'm also interested in such a situation. I will do more work. <laughs> <laughs>